another Kennedy's running for president. Oh, God. Uh, my favorite one. And also the one with the most dulcet tone of a voice. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> doesn't he have an actual condition? He does. It's yeah. really mean. He's I'm a horrible human being. Yeah. He doesn't have a frog in his throat. It's like a full-on dinosaur. It's like a yeah. Yeah. It sounds like Parkinson's, but what it's is apparently it? not. It's yeah. mixed with Kennedy-itis, too. Like, he's yeah. just got Kennedy voice, which is he, bad to begin with, right? Do we ever have an explanation? Kind of uh, well, I'll get I'll, I'll get to all of his amazing talking points, but uh, yeah, he's running um, to sort of uh, go against the tide of Joe Biden, uh, and he's actually, as uh, Mr. Matt Welsh has reported, surprisingly big numbers. I've not heard a whole lot what about is his he campaign. At 19? Twenty percent. Yeah, that is insane. Which no, um, no uh, challenger to Trump last time around. The Republican Party ever polled even once. That that is, that is actually really, really fucked up. And he's quite the anti anti vaxxer, uh, quite the conspiracy theorist. And as you noted, uh, really loves to th- uh, threaten to kill and or jail anyone who disagrees with him. And this seems to be a pattern of, of his. And I don't know. A lot of it might be uh, just him. Those are his talking points, or maybe he really just has bloodlust. If they're, but, yeah, if they disagree with him, he said they should potentially be jailed for treason. What is the penalty for treason? Does anybody remember? Right. Death? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I just like doing this to Some you. Some <laughs> homeless guy comes up to you yeah. looking like John Morant, and he like, yeah. threatens to kill Finger guns? <laughs> is that the guy that killed that actress? John Morant? No, he's yeah. an NBA basketball player. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's 50. He still could have killed an actress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's so he's the he's the what it's either Biden or this guy or Marianne Williamson. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Pulling at eight or nine percent yeah, right now. Percent. I have to. That's tell actually you, insane. I, if it to, if I had to cast a vote for RFK Jr. or Marianne Williamson, it hands down it's Williamson. Oh, absolutely, hands yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's he's not. I mean, and I believe, and I got a little reamed out about this yesterday by my podcast partner Sarah Heppala. I think he, he's twenty percent because of his name. That's it? Like, oh, of it's course. It's not his ideas. It's not like, oh, yes, dude. I mean, there are a few, like, maybe fringy people, but it's his name. And then what What did you quote the, the MILF the milf factor? Dear God. So there's an 18,000-word piece about him, just like a ball-cupping exercise from Tablet, which is not what you normally associate with it. With Ball-cupping? Uh, with ball-cupping. It's a lot of words. A lot of words. A lot yeah. of words. Super long interview, and it's like, and it's in Tablet, which is... Um, uh, you wouldn't expect to be, I don't know, uh, run an interference for a guy who compares childhood vaccines to the Holocaust, which he has several times. And, and like the questions about that were like, uh, oh, that's just journalists trying to do a gotcha because, you know, you were just making a point about big pharma. It's like or you were calling childhood vaccines a Holocaust, which is yeah. insane. That's like yeah. cuckoo bananas uh, uh, kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, so really uh, long loving um, interviews with this guy in which he you know, says that Sirhan Sirhan didn't kill his father, um, that even though That's Sirhan Sirhan has apologized to him in person, he doesn't think he did it. <laughs> um, but that's not even the, the stuff that gets Nancy uh, really upset. <laughs> Is uh, do you are you follow the RFK sex diaries from ten years ago? Oh, I guess apparently it's twenty. So just no, so but I didn't know. That. I want to. Coverage was ten years ago. Yeah. Um, well, no, because his wife committed suicide that- in 2012, I think. So the diaries surfaced in 20. 20- this is grim shit. Okay. I'm sorry no. for it. Yeah. Um, but uh, he had these uh, sex diaries that that surfaced at the time in which he was uh, serially talking, and this is, why I don't know which wife it was in there, but he's but he's constantly talking about, like, being tortured because he just wants to fuck everyone. His lust demons. His lust demons, and he's like, I'm Catholic on one hand, I'm married on the other hand, and I'm going to rank every woman on a numerical scale, on the <laughs> other hand. From one to As ten. a fucking grown-ass adult, right. he's ranking women one to ten on a numerical scale, and it's not even, like, bangability, which would be gross enough, but it's, like, how far he actually got or, like, how far he was imagining going. And it so was it's like, not even, like, third base. He's got a scale of ten. Such juvenile shit. It's As like, a grown, in his 40s, uh, maybe so 50s. He's, so it's also, like, in one case, the New York Post ran a piece about this last week. And so it must be true. I, I think you sent it to me or I saw it somewhere. And, um... So, like, sometimes it was, like, three in one day, and the diary is like, I can't, it's just been so terrible. I'm so, like, plagued with these lust demons. And then, but what I would write is, you know, when I had a day where I didn't do that, I would write victory. And at first I'm reading this, like, he's, you know, conquered his demons, right? And at first I'm reading this, I'm thinking, like, 
I don't really know a lot about this guy, but you know, to be so engaged. And then I realized, oh, no, no, no. He's writing these diaries to be read because yeah. he is so, such a rancid, entitled human being. But the part that really drove me berserk, his second wife, he had a child and he's like, she's finally becoming the woman I knew she could be. You know, she's conquering her insecurities and she's kind of like doing what I say. And now I'm up, and I was like, oh, great. So while you're out banging three women a day and your wife just had a baby, you're delighted that she's finally, you're finally got her to the point where she's okay. He really is a Kennedy. Fuck him. Yeah, Kennedy. yeah the sex demons alone. It's yeah. like inside the mind of, Previous people he's related to that haven't had diaries, um, and I, I'm very Catholic too to just think of it all. Yeah, as no, that, that is a good point. You. Like writing it to be read. No, you yeah. could tell. Like I didn't at the beginning. I didn't look. I know people that have had you know drug addictions and sex addictions. I'm right it's, here. It's not fun. But I got to a point. Where I was like, no, no, this is not what this is. Yeah. Um, so Sarah Heppola, she because who has an alcoholic and you know, she's been sober a long time. She pushed. We talked about the pod, She pushed back at me. She's like Nancy, I feel for him and his for addictions. And she's like, and by the way, who is he? Like, how is he related to the Kennedys? I'm like, really? Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Yeah, that's Let what, me, what I think said. about. It. I was like, Robert. She's like, whoa, really? I was like, okay. Anyway, she she was she is the nicer part of our podcast. There's no doubt. And I was just like, yeah, I don't. I really no fan of Camelot though. Good lord. I also, mean, the Junior thing alone. He also wrote. Um, and a thing that uh, bothers me, like I wouldn't vote for him because he's a scumbag and he's a Kennedy, um, but also uh, his uh, life as an as an activist, he's an environmental activist, and then um, uh, and then now an anti-vaccine uh, mandate uh, activist. Um, he will do these big deep dive like articles for Rolling Stone or Salon or whatever, almost all of which get retracted. And anytime someone like looks into them, they pick them apart. So he's a mm -hmm. election denier about 2004. Like he wrote a, a an endless thing for Rolling Stone saying, you know, uh, the Republicans rigged Ohio. Um, but uh, he wrote two different things. One was an, a really long article in The Atlantic in 2003. And then one was a book in, in 2016 for si Simon and Schuster. So like he's really being censored out there. Um, that both of them are uh, are arguing that his cousin, Michael Skakel, didn't kill that gal, Martha Moxley, with a golf club in Greenwich, Connecticut in, uh, in the 70s, in the mid-70s. The 2003 article said, oh, I was this dude over here. The 2016 one, two completely new dudes that he pinned it on who were black guys from Manhattan who he said uh, were lusting after her blonde hair um, and wanting to go caveman on her. Can you imagine? I mean, that sounds like a quote possibly from his diary. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't one of them related to Kobe Bryant's father or something? Or the the one person who was supposed to be the witness to show that was related. He was a, a last name Bryant, and uh, and so the prosecutor in the case said, "Okay, Mr. Kennedy, um, if you think you have this evidence, which he said could like you know this is definitely enough him. for an indictment." It's like let's get the guy in here under oath and then question him. The guy's like, "Ah, I'm super busy this decade and wouldn't uh, testify." So his one link to these these rando guys who their lives are, are screwed up because mm -hmm. they are they, they've crossed the Kennedy clan and their uh, guys got like his daughter works for the New York City like sanitation department or something like that he can't go outside he's like his life is ruined oh, one more uh, one more bit about that that Sarah mentioned Sarah used to be the like essay editor at salon and they ran an article by Robert Kennedy jr I guess she didn't know who he was back then and about anti-vax and they had to retract it they had to take it back and that no matter what they're still we're getting like these angry, angry responses from his lunacy. And yet people, well, it's the name. Boy, you can really travel a lot in the old Kennedy name. I mean, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. He was assassinated in 63 and it's still fucking happening. But like, it's also it's also that like uh, Democrats don't want Biden to run. Like no. all, yeah. most no. majorities of Democrats until very recently when you ask them, you know, all things considered run, not run. They're like, cool, not run. Can we yeah. have someone else run? <laughs> and so when everybody flees the scene, you're left with fringe randos, like uh, Kennedy's not a rando, but he's fringe. Oh, he is, yeah. And Marianne Williamson, God love her, is like a crazy, you know, thrice-divorced spiritual but, guru. But, you know, a few, she says a few 
are things that make sense. I like her. She dances. I like her. She dances very well, as we all know. Yeah, maybe I'm well, maybe I'm well, shining out of this uh, Marianne Williamson person. I like. I mean, it's not like there's any shortage of goofballs uh, in the nominee for the Republican side. Actually, the Dems are trying to look a lot more like the Republicans once you uh, get rid of the Biden factor, as old as he is. Oh, and that's a good segue for another thing that we have. Um, but anyway, but also like. With Robert Kennedy, though, why? I mean, obviously, it's a relation, I guess, by blood. Skakel, yeah. But is, what what is his obsession with this thing? Uh, he knew him. They were uh, close. Uh, growing okay. Up. So, like, it's I, I I wouldn't believe that my cousin would ever do such a thing. And um, it's I remember Mark Furman inserted himself into that story. Um, oh yeah. Wrote, wrote a book about it, and Dominic Dunn wrote a, a book about it. And so, yeah. from Kennedy's point of view, the Kennedys are being unfairly singled out. Which, if mm. we can say anything about Kennedys and their relationship with women, they're always just being unfairly singled right. out for their full beha- yeah. behavior. Yeah. Uh, I was working at Boston Magazine right in the middle of the rape trial for um what is William it kennedy smith. william kennedy smith and then uh tail ended by michael kennedy who was in trouble for something else and then playing and this is the here's the kennedy curse they put themselves in extremely um sketchy situations whether it's jfk where the whether if it's jfk jr getting a stupid pilot's license and immediately deciding to fly in fog with his family there and, in martha's vineyard yeah he didn't land Oh, were you? Yeah, we were going. Uh, so the vineyard's tiny, and we were stopped. We stopped at this little tiny gas station in West Tisbury, and they they have to they fill your tank there because there's, there's a kid probably, and he just said, uh, he's like uh, JFK's plane didn't come in, and it was like nine o'clock in the morning. You're like, wait, what? And so everybody knew instantly. I remember my brother went out and walked. You know, there were search parties looking on the beach to see if anything had floated up. Oh, my up. God. Yeah. Oh, wow. I remember exactly where I was when that happened. But, yeah, so, but, like, the end of it, Michael Kennedy's playing. I didn't even know it was a thing. It's a rich person thing. Foot, skiing football. Football skiing. You throw the football while skiing down. Right, there's right, trees right. everywhere. Smacks right into a tree. Dies instantly. And there is no Kennedy curse. They put themselves in harm's way all the time. They've got death wishes and have sex demons. And you would think that the family the would suddenly book. be, like, uh, more cautious. <laughs> you know, or they'd be yeah. like, uh, if it is a curse, maybe we shouldn't throw a football while skiing. Like, maybe we should. <laughs> no poles. Throw and catch. Stay inside. Going down a mountain football. <laughs> All right, well, you know, I don't want to say... Flying Walendas stayed in the game. That's yeah, true, well, but there was a lot of deaths. Yeah, they, wow. They have, they've had some, some, they've lost some people before their time, those Walendas. I don't think that they've got a clean record. I'll tell you, Matt uh, and I, both with our elderly parents, I, they, I don't know what age you should start testing people, but it by the early 80s... Things are not great. You will, yeah, we should I mean, all be testing our our own parents. Yeah. earlier than we think that we. Yeah, should yeah, be. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm I mean, sure I don't know. Area. I, but I mean, I have seen because I have a mother that's dealing with the uh, Alzheimer's. I have seen Biden a few times. Not lately. He seems to either be a a little more on his game or being totally. handled, or handled better. I don't know, Catherine. Well, yeah, I don't know how to talk really good. Yeah, because yeah. his teeth are clacking around in his mouth. Y- yeah, but, it's um, like the closest we've seen to what George uh, Washington must have sounded and like. I, and of course, <laughs> you don't know what they're showing you and like what kind of bites and clips and everything, but I definitely have seen a couple things. I'm like, yeah, I've seen mom. Well, and oh, what, God, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. haven't yeah. seen is him being interviewed. Because he, he doesn't do interviews. He yeah. rarely does press conferences. Yes. He's the least available president we've had, I think, in our lifetime, basically. Is he, but he's also the oldest, right? By far the oldest. So there, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know why she's doing this politically. Maybe wasn't, uh, didn't Don Lemon? Wasn't he? He the one that said about her that she was yeah. out of her prime? You know, maybe yeah, that's like, how okay, it all started. Fine, I'm out of my prime. How about this dude? How yeah. about him being? But, uh, out of his it's prime? also her way of saying uh, that she's uh, against both Trump and Biden. Yeah, totally. No yeah, she's getting the cake and eating it because what's, she's like, uh, because Trump's 77, and uh, that she's. Well, and what's interesting is it's an op-ed, and she. Uh, is making the case for a renewed call for mandatory competency tests. So someone was already asking for this, or she did before? Maybe someone did in the 1920s after the whole Woodrow Wilson problem. Well, I think what they're talking about is that she had said it before, and then Don Lemon she's made just his doubling clip, down. but now she's doubling down. Um, she said that um, anyone over 75 should have to take the test, and the results should then be made public. It wouldn't only be for Biden, but for every other politician over the age of 75, Republican or Democrat. Well, it has to be fair. Thank you. Um, 
I, wh why can't we make this a reality show? Like, do a bunch of different things. Do the drunk test. Do this one, right? Right? Which a lot of us can't do. Oh, this would be the, uh, Wait, what is this one? Oh, so you, your, your pinky and your on this hand and your thumb. Okay. And your, and I then, can and almost do it. And just do it at the I same time. I know. I think I'm already impaired. Um, uh, do the... Can you do, do this the, with your tongue? Nose touching? No, that's hereditary, though. I do not have the genes for the... Okay. Now well, you're making a four-leaf clover. clover. Oh, yeah, that I can't do. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That is fucked up. I want some really weird, random yeah. tests. Yeah. Just like, yeah. the, ever, know, ever like turn on like ABC or NBC or CBS by accident in primetime? They always have these incredible shows, like the Ninja Contest. And, yeah. Like human <laughs> beings are out there. Or is doing lava. It for, for 15 years, yeah. and you had no, no idea. They're and, oh, yeah. They're great. And they're really great. Um, let's We're becoming more and more Japan. We're starting to get it. Uh, yeah. yeah. As far as our Program. Let's get some precedents out there, in not just in Dancing with the Stars, but like in ninja contests. Let's put and them. Things they have to like jump off different ledges and grab things that we could get rid of so many of them so quickly. That's true. Uh, right? Just like, great, just clear the field. Trump okay. Flapping on some kind of thing over water. Just like, oh, the leg. Yeah, just, just, like, just oh. I want to see him shirtless. Why don't we have any photos of that? Because oh, he's, there, he's there, surprisingly there obese. There was the there was the <laughs> golf there was the golfing hit thing of him. Oh like, yeah, that was great. Boobs Whole and things. Were oh, right. it's just job of the hut with a putter. Oh uh, those God. pictures. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Why do sexy clothes not exist for men? Mainstream menswear is often basic and functional, while well-dressed men are praised for wearing clean clothes that fit. I love that. But, asks Oliver Keens, thank you so much, Oliver, what if a man wants to dress sexy? This guy's got to be gay. Even, the, even asking the question, let alone executing it, uh, yeah, completely. Um, he says, I suspect a lot more men would secretly love a way to signal their desires through sexy clothes. Beyond Sorry, just this man is gay. A fleece, a, I don't even know how to say this word, Berghaus jacket? What the fuck is that? Or unbuttoning that second shirt button, you racy fox, you. It's vital to make clear that when we talk about sexy clothes, we're not translating that as an assumption that a person is automatically feeling sexual. But it's also true that in certain scenarios, humans like to wear clothes that make them not just feel sexy, but look sexy. For people who wear women's clothes, there's a pretty well-established canon that fits this brief. Yes. Fashion brand Boohoo has a sexy and seductive page on, the, on its website. ASOS displays women's clothes, such as dresses, under the word sexy, but doesn't signpost men's clothes in the same way. Equality. Nancy, okay. it's about time, isn't it? Okay. My daughter told me a lot of years ago, she's like, Mom, you never, you never, we don't let the clothes wear you. No, for me, for a guy, I want him to be capable, right? I want him to be like, he's going to be able to take care of business and do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Ergo. Cargo shorts are fucking sexy because he's ready to go. He's got his fucking. I want phone. them to come back. He's got his thing. It's he going off. It's to hold away. things. He's got, <laughs> no, he's got. He can do things like oh, uh, Nick Flynn came over yesterday. I'm like Nick, help me hang the one of the lights fell off the wall in the studio. Okay, come on. Capable. He's like able to do that. If Nick Flynn, my friend, came over and he was wearing like some like I don't know little tailored thing and this and that, like he'd be worrying too fucking much about what he looked so wait, like wait, wait. to do what I needed done. Nancy, if you hear the, the jingle jangle of janitor keys, oh. does it make you tingle? <laughs> That's my point. Um, you know, but, but let me also say, so like when I say like do what needs to be done and then I find that sexy, for instance, we went to a, actually we've been to a couple of galas in the past month, right? This dude cleans up nice. Like, he looked great. He had on a beautiful suit. suit but still, that's also, like, in service to something. Mm. It's not in service to, like, oh, I'm so sexy. Fuck you. I don't care about that. Like, service to Bill Maher. You want to be, like, ready. And that's what I think makes a guy that sexy. Now, girls, it's different, right? Because mm. girls, they're curvy. <laughs> I like that you're explaining this more, to us. Like, yeah. <laughs> How do I? I I'm not. I'm, even, I'm like wondering what you're censoring yourself here for. I'm not. I, uh, I'm not saying. Do girls have vaginas? <laughs> <laughs> the sexiness is also in service to the way they move through the world. Mm. And they are. There's different things you. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm. I'm really no, I think I understand it. Okay, let's say a man and a woman are both hanging a TV. 
You want the man in cargo shorts so he can hang the TV. You want the woman in a very short skirt so when yes. she hangs the TV. And then also for when she right? goes and gets the lemonade That's afterwards, accurate. she looks good bringing you the lemonade. Yes. That's, That's what accurate. I'm trying to say. Yeah. So for a woman, it's a visual thing. It's also for a man, it's the it's capable. Also, thing. what is the thing? Cargo shorts. I'm sorry. I don't know where I heard this. It's probably stupid, but men like to look. Women like to be looked at. That is true. Hmm. I'm glad to know the other part. I'll start looking a little more these days. I always forget my sunglasses anyway. But um, the so. older you get, the more you get busted. Although, would you agree that oftentimes women, when they dress and like to be looked at, they want the approval of other women? Yeah, that's what my mom would always teach me. She's like, they're dressed for other women, not you. Um, or to signal that you're I, elbowing you a sign, right? Mm, yeah. I think... Um, I'm sure that that's true. I will say, like, when I'm getting dolled up and I want to look nice or I want to get dressed, I just want to feel a certain way that feels good and feel that you can, like, transmit this so that you can be interacted with people and they're giving you back the, you know, you're just, like... Similar energy. Creating a little, yeah. like, force field so that everybody, it's, like, just upping the thing. And it could, women and men, it's fine. Like, mm. it doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, I got to say, the only time I've ever seen her not completely dead inside... And more automaton than human, uh, is when we were looking at the footage of the World Cup uh, Iranian team not singing the national anthem. They do a slow pan of the entire team. And I look over at Joe and she goes, they are gorgeous. Right. <laughs> the only right. time you ever actually looked hetero to me, actually. Yeah. Right. And they're but it's wearing totally her, her type. That Middle Eastern look. I don't know what I mean, it it's is. weird, yeah. Like a little swarth. Yeah. 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 And, you know, Douglas has got the beard and tall. So there you go. Damn. I think there's something to the – I start to distrust. I'm, I'm appreciative of a guy who's going to dress all nice. I would just watch uh, Bugsy Malone again. It still holds up. Oh, I listened to you uh, talk about that, the uh, kid but, Bugsy Malone. Yeah. But uh, the kid movie, Scott Baio, at age 10, still can, like, throw a suit on. I mean, he looked great. <laughs> Absolutely great. Shoot a potato gun. Uh, yeah. Splurge gun. Um, but uh, – uh, it should be in function. You have to be able to clean up nice. You have to be able to dress for work. Uh, and then beyond that, if every single minute of your day is stylish, I have my suspicions about mm. your priorities. None of you have yet men mentioned uh, Abbott's Field Flannels, obscure baseball teams of the early 20th century, cotton polyester t-shirts. Yeah, cotton poly blend isn't it, sexy no, for most. It's not. Uh, it's not. And, it, and it smells. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> 